So welcome everybody here tonight. It has been brought to my attention that when I talk up here, it's good for the most part, but my introductions are just choppy as anything. So you know what? I'm just gonna own it. So the first block is the introduction. Hi, my name is Chandler. <laughs> See, you guys are awesome. If you're new here, or if it's your first time, in a long time, welcome back. And uh, if you guys notice when some things haven't changed, when you come in, there's little cards on the seat. Inside of those are connection cards. Make sure you fill those out. Later on, there's gonna be a bucket that gets passed around. Drop it in there. Just drop the cards. Don't drop candy wrappers or little gobs of regret or whatever you guys drop in there. The series we've been talking about, you asked for it. Some of y'all bless your hearts. Y'all ask some good questions. And so what Tim has done is he's divided these questions up and we don't know what the questions are until about a week prior. So tonight, the questions are gonna kinda go on a little emotional roller coaster and I'm gonna try to keep it real for you guys, <laughs> but at the same time, hit all the target audience. The first question that was asked, how do you have confidence in yourself and not care what others think? I didn't know how to take this one. First off, I, was, I thought somebody asked me this to me directly, like Chandler, really? How do you wake up in the morning and wear what you wear and really not care what anybody thinks? And my response was, well, I wake up in the morning and it's like a machine and I just have to turn my hat around and feel the pat like a semi. Really, you guys missed that over the top? I mean, we watched that up there. See, this, 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 is, this is as good as it gets. All right. So how do you have confidence and not care what people think? Well, it takes years to get this bitter and not care what people think. But I've learned throughout the years if what, makes, you know, what makes me happy is just quit trying to please everybody else. Some of you guys have, that have been here and seen me talk before, you've seen the pictures. I mean, pink hair, blonde hair, the band pictures, the regret pictures. I mean, some of you got pictures here, I was wearing a, a dress from Value Village. But Chandler, how do you not care? Well, you know what? Remember the two things. If it doesn't affect your family or your paycheck, really every day is a good day. And if I wanna wear a Hello Kitty t-shirt out to work one day because it's comfortable and it's made with that 50-50 poly blend that's really nice on your skin and it feels smooth, you know. Anyway, but if it was comfortable at a certain age, you just care about comfort. That's why sometimes you wear orthopedic shoes because it's about comfort. But your true friends are gonna accept you for who you are. And that's really what makes it a lot easier of being comfortable with yourself. Everybody in this room has got quirks. Everybody. And they have them in their own ways. And some of your friends, you're like, you know what, this is my good weekend friend, this is my good weekday friend, and that's fine. Because if I wanna go talk, about how, talk smack about how I'm a Pokemon master, oh, I'm gonna lay that gauntlet down to Tim and be like, what's up? What you got? Right here, Pokemon master, level 28. And then Tim, he's like, I'm level 30. And I'm like, oh. But, or if I'm like, hmm, I want to talk about how my knee hurts and uh, how it's Obama's fault. Hey, Brandon, what you doing today? <laughs> and he's like, I don't know. Hey, you know what? Let's go take a motorcycle ride and we'll talk about it. Sweet. Now, if I'm in a mood where I want to relive, you know, high school and talk about 90s hip hop and rap lyrics, who am I going to call? Danny, that's it, D-Money. I mean, so basically the answer to that question is the sooner you're happier with yourself, the confidence just comes along with it. And I get it. There's a lot, there's probably more people out there that don't accept me than there are who do, but I'm not worried about it. I'm just gonna concentrate and focus my energies on the ones that accept me for me. America. So. The second question. Now I read this one, I was like, okay. 
are there other universes like in the comics and movies? Are there other me's out there? Now the answer, I did a lot of research, and the answer is yes, there's many universes out there. And there's two very important ones, and it's called Marvel and DC. And <laughs> the proof that Marvel exists is right here. This is how we know Marvel exists. I've been there. I've seen it. Now, are there other me's? This is my doppelganger that is a Ravager from Guardians of the Galaxy. So we have that connection. Makes sense? America. But, but the question is on the galaxies. Are there other galaxies out there? Now, the scientific answer is yes. Now, if you think of where we are in this world, here's another picture. In relation, <laughs> these are galaxies upon galaxies out there. And that little speck right there, that's the Milky Way. That's us. So when you put that in context, like, is there other things out there? Well, yeah. But how do we know what's out there? Well, I'm not going to turn to, like, Hesitations 515, and it's going to say, uh, God created Alpha Centaur 3 and made, you know, ectomorphic. No, he doesn't say that. But I'm sure you guys have learned in, in your time, never underestimate God. So I'm going to merge on the side of caution. And here's another picture of just where we are. But I would rather say, I'm not going to doubt God. And is there another ecosystem out there that could inhabit life? Possibly. So if I get one, if, whoo, that was almost, we got a whole other topic if I say if I get to heaven. When I get to heaven <laughs> and I ask God, I'm like, I'm like, hey, that galaxy, you know, uh, Zulu 4, he goes, oh yeah, Chandler, we had this whole ecosystem of life and plants and veganism running around here and plants that grew, without, grew up without gluten. I'm like, Oh, of course you did. Why? Why not? Why would you? Because if I assume that there isn't, then we all know assuming is bad. <laughs> the second part of that question, are there other me's out there? Well, Matthew 10.30 says, you know, even the hairs on your head are numbered. Now I'm thinking, like, where are my video gamers at? Raise your hand. Okay, now when you guys create your little avatars or your little me's, right, and, and you put all the time into it and it's got the little, you know, the scar on its face from a knife fight that you had back in high school, or whatever, however you make yours, but you put a lot of time and detail in that. You don't really necessarily number the hairs on the head, you just give it the pre-made hairdos and whatnot. But if you lose that data and you make another one, you always make it just a little bit different. I would like to think that if God spent all this time making a custom human job, such as myself, and knows the, the amount of hair on my head, that I've got to be only one. So just like each one of you, like there's only one of you. Which brings on to the next question. How could we know if we are the only one if our technology is so limited? Once again, here I go, I gotta put my sci-fi hat on. I don't, now this is, this is the questions according to Chandlerism. I don't think there's an alternate universe with Bizarro Chandler out there that, you know, that has manners and doesn't knife chop people and is very encouraging. Uh, I don't think that exists out there. But we, we just saw the pictures of where we are in relation to the universe. I mean, that was like magnified way out. And when you put the science behind it of where we are in relation to that, we all know Earth is a star, correct? It's, it's, it's all the planets are a star. And this star happens to have enough ecosystem and life on it. Now, the amount of stars are, there are out there, where Earth is in location, if we were 
a couple hundred miles this way, we would freeze. A couple miles this way, we'd fry like bacon. Because where Earth originated, it, we really don't know. It just says, God said, Earth, seven days. Now, how many planets do we have in our solar system? Nine. How many alleged do we have? Eight, nine, and if we recognize which one? Pluto. See, always Pluto. But, so, when I go to work all the time, and I look at the satellites, and I look at where Earth is, and I look at some of these satellites that break because they flew off the radar and they just burn up, and here I am thinking, if we were just a little bit closer, we would not survive. If the Earth axis was just, eh, eh, that's it. And you have all these theories that if we wobble off and, you know, the Earth is slowly spinning on its axis, they're all theories and global warming. But you mean to tell me that God put that much time to put us just in the right spot so we don't just melt every day? So when he made all those galaxies out there, who's to say there's not life on there? I'm not going to tell God, hey God, you, this is, I'm so important, the only life that can exist is on earth. No. But because the technology is limited, lim limited we can either confirm or deny. Now there's a lot of verses in the Bible that talk about this, especially when you get down into Revelation, but... I mean, this is Chandler. I don't have any degrees in Bible seminar. And if we start talking about revelations and the apocalypse and the four horsemen, and yeah, you guys are going to be in a corner rocking, shaking, and be like, I didn't know that was happening. So <laughs> we're going to move on to the next question. Is why isn't Jesus pronounced Jesus? <laughs> now, that depends on who you ask. Because my friend Chico who lives in Rancho Cucamonga, South California, is going to say, well, no, his name is Jesus. You just call him Jesus. <laughs> and I'm like, well, no, we're right, because we're American. And it's Jesus, not Jesus. And you have a language barrier and whatnot. But it's safe to say it could go either way. I think if you pray and you put up the prayer antenna and you're like, Jesus, it still goes up. If you say, hey, Suze, it's not going to go VHF or UHF and end up talking to, you know, Buddha or something. No, you get the same path of communication. All right, so if there's any doubt before, either one works. And if you don't believe me, put on the SAP button on your TV. And it'll say the same thing. The next question. <laughs> what is, hey, Suze, is this? Middle name. Now, you guys ask these questions, and I actually have to Google some of this stuff. And I've learned that Wikipedia is not a viable source either. So please don't sort that as a, sort that? Cite that as a source. Public school education, right here. So now when I Googled it, scholars maintain. <laughs> well, according to Time Magazine, <laughs> that middle names originated way back in the Roman days. Like Rome, like Sparta, you know. Ah, this is 300, you know. You guys get it. So, it's the same thing. <laughs> See, I love it. See, what I've learned with this group, and it's taken me, what, I've been up here for, what, two years or something? I just got to throw out the truth off just a little bit, just to make sure you guys are still listening. So it's great. Because then you guys are like, Chandler, you said this. I'm like, oh, you were listening. Oh, no heart, tear, you know, whatever. But back in the Roman days, about four, uh, 146, so we're talking like way before DirecTV, middle names were used to show lineage of rich people. So if you were rich, you had a middle name. And basically, that was just there to show like, you're like a purebred, really. And then they got carried away with it. I mean, they took it to the extreme. Like, there were some people that had like 38 middle names. And I get it. Like, if 
the most we can uh, kind of relate to that is if the uh, Spanish descent, right, with the Hernandez, Fernandez, Garcia, Guadalupe, and yes, you guys get it. But 38 names, that's a bit much. So then they reeled that back, and they're like, you know what, no, nah, we're going to get away with that for a while. Then about the 1400s, they kicked it back up. And then with, so if the middle names of what they kept it back up to what it means today, and a lot of, um, just to show your name, or sometimes now when females get married to men folk and they want to keep their last name, so they got two hyphenated names. But it's 1400, so Jesus was born when? Three or four BC. Well, definitely BC. <laughs> because if he was born ace, yeah, history again. So. Did he have one? It's safe to say, probably not. So how did? So then the question was, well, how do you know if Mary was really mad at him because she didn't have he didn't have a middle name? You just <laughs> you, you you guys got it. So the next question: <laughs> Do those prayer towels TV preachers give away for donations really do anything? Once again, I was like, so I've seen the terrible towels at the football games. So then I looked on YouTube for magical preacher towels, and then it took me to like an eBay site where people were bidding on it, and I was like, no, like some dude's sweat supposed to be magical to me? I'm like, huh, no. <laughs> I mean, we're not talking like anointing oils. Like, you know, you go to like a, you know, some people have anointing oils that are prayed over, and it's not just like, you know, 10 W, you know, WD-40, 10 weight 40, you know. We're not talking oil like that. But do, the, do they work? I'm going to say no. Would I buy one? No. And that's the truth. So you, I'm not going to say, no, no, it's that way none of you guys buy them so I can keep them all for myself. No, 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 trust me. Don't buy no sweaty, nasty used towel from a TV preacher man think it's going to do something for you other than probably give you like, I don't know, scoliosis or something. <laughs> now, are soulmates a real thing? I had, to try to, I had to actually ponder on this one more than just a Google search. So when you say soulmate, when I, and I say you, and if I'm looking at you, I just mean the royal you, not you in particular. Okay, so when you ask, do soulmates, are they a real thing? I, I, I'm guessing you mean like a man friend or a lady friend. And if we rewind me back to the late 90s, pretty much any girl that when I said, hey, do you want to go out? And they're like, uh, sure. I'm like, oh, we're soulmates, yes. So, but if that was my soulmate then, then whoever's sitting there in the back row with my two kids, it's going to be a really awkward ride home. You know what I mean? So, do they exist? Yes, but are they in the context of, you know, the person that I'm dating today is just, this is it. God put this person in my life and we're, ah, we're going to get married. Now, sometimes that does happen and those people are amazing. For the rest of the 99% that it doesn't happen to, that are not fortunate for that, even, even when you're dating, even the people that dated in high school, did they know that it was their soulmate? No. I think, I believe that soulmates are kind of like forged. You know? It takes time to make a soulmate. Soulmates evolve from they know that what your favorite snack is. At the, whether it be peanut M&M's, but a true, a true soulmate knows like when it's time for your blood pressure medicine, can identify the signs of a stroke, you know, <laughs> when, you know, that's, yeah, that means they put in the time and they, they just know when you, you're about to eat something, baby, don't eat that, you know, it's going to give you indigestion. <laughs> I love you so much, you're right. That's good looking out. 
Now, a friend is just going to be like, watch, watch, watch this, watch this. He's lactose intolerant. <laughs> it's full of dairy. And then we're going to go take a road trip for the next hour. And he's like, in the back seat, and he's just crying and doubled over. Not a soulmate. But the definition of a soulmate is a person who is perfectly suited to another in temperament. A person who strongly resembles another in attitudes or belief. Yeah, anybody that resembles my attitudes and beliefs has got to be my soulmate. <laughs> so that person is out there. Yes. Is it the person that you think it is Mr. or Miss today? That's for you guys to decide. That's, that's forged through prayer, time, heartache, tears, love. So yes, they do exist. Soulmates are those who go the long haul. They never quit, give up, accept you for you, and understand what forever means. Now, you guys, like, your definition of forever is like, it's taken forever for Twilight 7 to come out, you know, whatever. I mean, like, grown folk forever. Now, the heavy hitter of the night. What does it mean to be born again virgin, and how does God view it? Sweet mother of Buddha. Like, this is the one I'm like, I, I had to let Kathy review my slides. I'm like, can I say this? And she's like, no, no, no. And I'm like, okay. I mean, it does sound ridiculous. How do you become a born-again virgin? And what do I tell people if they ask if I'm a virgin? First question you say is, well, why? ain't none of your business whether I am or not. But the question is, what do you tell yourself? Is it possible to start over to be a virgin again? So there's this guy in the Bible, and he asks the same, kind of the same kind of question to God. And he says, how can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? John 3, 4. And Jesus, you know, he pondered it, meandered, thought. And then he was... But when Jesus talked about it, he was talking about a second spiritual birth. John 3, 6, humans can, own, humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives a new life from heaven. So, break it down for me, Chandler. Okay, no problem. You can lose your physical virginity once. That's it. I mean, you did it, you did it, it's gone, it ain't coming back. It, it's... It's not like Biggie. It's not coming back. I'm sorry. But with it comes a lot of physical and emotional consequences. And a lot of times those memories are etched in your brain forever. I mean, and you can't pretend. I mean, they're there. You can't pretend they're gone. But spiritually, yeah, you can totally start over. Spiritual rebirth doesn't, dest it doesn't just erase or destroy the past. It kind of just like morphs it or transforms it. And when you're reborn, it really doesn't set a limitation on what you can do. I mean, we've, we've, I've showed you the universe. I've showed you the Milky Way. I, I've shown you what God can do. If he can do that, then I really wasn't worried about spiritual rebirth. So Paul talked about this, trans, this uh, transformation to a bunch of Christians in Greece. Now, this, this, this is from the Bible. This is grown folk words right here. And he broke it down. Don't you know that those who do wrong will have no share in the kingdom of God? Oh, okay, keeps it real. Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin, who are idol worshipers, adulterers, male prostitutes, Homosexuals, thieves, greedy people, drunkens, abusers, swindlers, none of them. Like, he didn't just leave it at one. He's like, okay, I'm going to break it down and tell it to you for you, just in case you have any doubts. None of them will have a share in the kingdom of God. There was a time when some of you were just like that, but now your sins have been washed away, and you've been set apart for God. You have been made right with God because of what Lord Jesus Christ and the Spirit of God have done for you. 1 Corinthians 6.9. So he says it like, look, don't play pimp me. I know what you guys did in the past, but you guys got right. And you started that transformation. But you can't do it on your own. 
that is way too much emotional baggage for you guys to try to do that like, like, oh, yeah, I'll just ask God for it and I'll wake up tomorrow and be like, yeah, it's good. No, I mean, it takes like, you got to have that, that communication like every day. So when you've stopped having sex and asked for forgiveness, can you call yourself a virgin? Well, not in a physical sense, no. We already, we already said that. One shot, done. But because you've been purified by God, you are a virgin in his eyes. That's all that matters. If you're happy with yourself, you accept yourself, God accepts you, ain't no drama there. I ain't worried about what everybody else says. But it does clear up your future. You may have a, you're going to have a reputation. There's going to be a little bit of drama. But once you give it all to God, you're as good as new. So once you've experienced this forgiveness, I mean, there's that, there's that guilt a little bit. And it's kind of like that when, you, when you're about to do something and you get that little, you think it's the bubble guts, but it's too high, then you think it's indigestion. You're like, no, that's, that's the Holy Spirit telling you, like, mm, you probably shouldn't do this. But a lot of you guys treat it like Jiminy Cricket and you're like, Ugh. <laughs> shh, you're too loud, go away. That guilt's not going to change instantly. There are other consequences that could come from your actions. Painful memories, diseases, pregnancies, that doesn't go away when God transforms you. There's still consequences. He's still going to love you regardless of what the situation is. But you've got to give it to him and you've got to ask him. You've got to talk to him. Even though you're still going to feel guilty, it's vital that you know that as far as God's concerned, you're not guilty. And that's the truth. 1 John 1, 9, that God promises to forgive us and cleanse us when we confess our sins to him. That's the truth. Where God promises to forget your sins forever. So Jesus didn't die on the cross to take away your feelings. I mean, that, I mean, that kind of comes with it, and that would have been great, but that's not... He didn't go up there for feelings. That this is, no, it was bigger than that. He died to take away your sins. Clean you of them. And it's all about that transfor transformation. They can give you compassion for the pain that other people goes through. So along the back wall, there's a lot of people that have experienced that pain and that transformation. And they're there so that when you guys think that you're all alone and you don't know where to turn to, you just, who do I talk to? You know, just ask any of the grown folk, just like, this is my situation, and who do I talk to? And you think your problem's this big, and then when you talk to the grown folk, they're going to be like, oh, your problem's right about here. And then once God takes it, done. So let's go ahead and stand up. All right, let the blood flow back into your legs. Come on forward. And every week, now this, now we just, we're just doing this series, I think, for maybe one more week. But every week you guys have these, these every day, some of you guys have these questions just running through your head 24-7. What if, what if, what if, what, what, what? And we're just getting like the tip of the iceberg when we come up here and address these questions. If you don't take away anything, this is your takeaway tonight. You're not alone. And if you think you are, and you don't know how to ask God for forgiveness, that's what we're here for. Anyone in the back row, no questions asked. We don't, we're not going to run and put on Facebook, hey, how do you deal with, I'm asking for a friend. No. We keep it on the DL. So let's go ahead and pray. Jelly Father, thank you that we're able to come here freely, worship you, and know that every week, that every week, every day and every hour, that you are there for us, no matter what we do. God, I just ask that you give the, just give them the answers, give them the wisdom to know how to deal with all these problems and questions that they just feel unanswered. Know that they've got you in their corner and everybody else in this room that has their back. No judgment. Watch over them, keep them safe, and help them enjoy their week. In Jesus' name, amen.